Jingle bells, Batman smells, Geo land at a JT. I don't know what a JT is, but all I know is Tay 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 Tay. I don't know where I'm going with that. But anyways, let's start the episode. Hello everyone, this is Oscar Joey Teen, aka Giovanni Warta, and welcome to another gym battle video where today we are taking on the poison type gym leader, aka Tai Chu Chu. You know what? I've been, this is like probably my 320th attempt on doing this voiceover, which is a special episode because the original recording in terms of the commentary wasn't as good as I thought it was. So when I was reviewing it, I said to myself, I can't publish this. I got to do a voiceover because this episode or at least this battle deserves some justice. Uh, so I'll be giving you a little insights of what I was thinking about. And that's how pretty much I'm going to lay out this episode. And actually, since this is my 320th attempt, I have to get this right. <laughs> uh, you know, out of my two years of experience with YouTube and recording, you think I get the hang of it by now. But honestly, it's not the case. But then again, I've been on and off every now and then so maybe that adds up so you know what frick it let's do this voice over it let's hope that this is the best that i can make it so anyways um how's everybody doing today let me know in the comment section below and if you answer that question then i'm assuming you made it this far into this video but without further ado let's get on to the video which is literally what you're seeing right now so so let's get on to the gameplay. So in this current time, I, I kind of remember, it's a little bit fuzzy, but during this point in time, I was doing my little outro, I mean little intro, um, announcing that I'm finding the poison type gym leader, just like I did at the beginning of this episode. And I'm about to go into the opening screen where I choose my team and my opponent's team. You know, when I was doing this voiceover a couple hours ago, I was kind of stressed out a little, but right now I feel like pretty free. So anyways, I'm going back to the gameplay. Um... For starters, when I initially opened up the screen, I got kind of overwhelmed uh, by the fact of the wheezing because I knew wheezing was going to be the biggest problem, like the biggest threat. So I was like, how am I going to deal with that threat? But here's something that I did not know, which I should have known because Goki Gamer literally, or it's either Goki Gamer or he, Goki Gamer fought someone in the ABL or IBA who had a wheezing. And for whatever reason, um, I forgot that uh, I forgot that Weezing had levitate, so that pretty much sucked on my part. And you guys are gonna see this take place later on. You you'll get what I mean. But anyways, um, going on to my team, the way that I had laid out my team was have um basically an earthquake, an earthquake team, and the only two filler Pokemon that are on my team is Diane and. Uh, Diane, Dur aka the Drilladon, and Dracofish, aka Tiamat. I know I said that in reverse order, but oh well, whatever. So going on to, um, I'll talk more uh, about my team as uh, the episode goes on. But something that I wanted to emphasize is the moment that I began the first turn, I was super overwhelmed. Like my my focus was on so much on the wheezing that I forgot that this opening right here was terrifying i mean i may not be for some but at least for me at the time i i was kind of afraid because look venusaur is a tanky beast you got plum aka the gloom and i know it was eviolite so i never want to underestimate an eviolite pokemon because i have an eviolite i've used eviolite teams before and i knew gloom was gonna be a massive threat so at this point in time, I was like, okay, I could kind of deal with a Venusaur, but I, I mean, I, I have an idea what Venusaur has on deck. Maybe some sleep powder shenanigans, poison powder shenanigans, synthesis, it's a bulky set, maybe I was thinking that way. But in terms of Gloom, I've never battled a Bloom, so that was news to me. And that is why I brought um, Dragapult onto the team, because Psychic Fangs is a thing. It could get Psychic Fangs, and I knew it was going to do a big deal of amount of damage on this team if I used it so I used psychic bags on the gloom because I knew it was gonna do a big deal of damage now here's the thing here's the this team was built off an earthquake because I was thinking of just sweeping this whole entire gym with pure earthquakes and it kind of worked it kind of worked and here's my favorite moment I know it was a little a real quick <laughs> real quick um, cut to this but 
this clutched the battle big time for me like big 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 time that sleep powder miss really 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 mattered because um i decided to bring an air balloon dragapult for this very reason because i wanted earthquakes to do amount of damage without having to worry about my own pokemon getting damaged by the earthquake and since this was a doubles battles and i suck at double battles this was my best way of like basically of dealing with double battles i'm an offense guy but i know offense is not always the best defense you know sometimes the best defense is also always the best offense but then again you want to find that balance between the two but anyways as you can see during this turn um going back to this turn turn i think this is turn two right yeah so on turn two venus are decided to protect and i wanted to let you guys know something i was so close to psyche fangs that venusaur but the reason i didn't do that because i knew the earthquake was gonna just take care of it either way so i said might as well deal with the other ones and now here is the moment that i was talking about here it is yeah just give it a sec <laughs> So something about this wheezing is I didn't know that wheezing got levitate. I thought it was just whoa, 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 what happened to wheezing right there? Huh? It just disappeared. So look, you're about to see it. So it's like, still psychic fangs the wheezing because I knew it was gonna be super effective. Now here, here it comes. Look, look, here it comes. Here it comes. Flygon's about to use earthquake, and I was like, okay, GG, GG. No one affected me, but nope. But nope, nope, I, I forgot it had levitate. I, f I completely forgot about levitate. Like, I knew the the normal Weezing had levitate, but I didn't think the Galarian version had it as well. But I guess it's a little bit of common sense. So, ever since um, I misplayed about that, then that, cast, that cost me pretty much my sweep. Because if it hadn't been for that levitate Weezing, I would have definitely easily gotten a 6 up with these two mons, but unfortunately, it did not end up that way. Uh, you're about to see what I'm about to do. Um, during this point in time, I was thinking, I gotta get rid of one of my Pokemon. I, I can no longer Earthquake freely. I mean, I kind of can, but I'm not trying to take in another Dazzling Gleam from Weezing, because as you can see, it did a good d deal amount. Like, I could've easily just switched out, you know what, go for another Earthquake and try try to take down the... Actually, would it have helped? Maybe. Uh, I was thinking right now, maybe I could've just Earthquake and taken down the Toxic Croak. But then again, another Dazzling Gleam might have just done me in, not gonna lie. Now thinking about that, hmm, I don't know, it all depends if it's Sucker Punched. But in, as you can see right now... I switched into Haxorus because I knew this guy was going to take a Dazzling Gleam no matter what. Now here's the thing, if had I gone with the plan of using Earthquake, then definitely I would have been able to Oko. Because I knew Flygon would have tanked another hit and then I could have gone from there. So anyway, so now, now that um, Speedo was out, I still wanted a 6-0. I mean, at least I wanted a 5-0, and I knew I could have made that possible. Wait, did I? I'm trying to remember if I did. It was either a 5-0 or it was really close. I was trying to 5-0 with this at this point in time. But I knew I was in a very big peril because I had to get rid of that Weezing, or else I wouldn't be able to Earthquake freely. And also, if I had Moivar now, I could still deal again my earthquakes because even though Haxorus has mold breaker it has nothing against typing so it only does it against abilities so now i could earthquake freely and take down that wheezing without having to worry about anything now at this point in time i think i was afraid wait i think you i think it did sucker punch me uh nope it didn't sucker punch huh all right that was a bit odd so i at this point in time i was I was kind of afraid also because I thought the Toxic Croak was just gonna purely just go for the Sucker Punch, but it did not do that, which I'm surprised why it didn't. Because I'm pretty sure a Sucker Punch from that range would have done me in. But it decided to go with a Rock Slide. So, hey. But at the end, it still cost me because the Toxic Croak still survived. So, had it still Sucker Punch, maybe I would have done a lot much more better damage. Anyways. So going back on the way that I was built in this team. So honestly, the way that I built this team, as I mentioned earlier, is it was basically an Earthquake team. That's pretty much it. There was the idea. 
I just wanted to find the right Dragon type Pokemon combination that can that I can just Earthquake away without having to worry about anything, without being damaged. Now, initially for the Dragon Pole, it wasn't supposed to have the Air Balloon. I think I had like an, I don't know, like a, uh, I think it was the Coker Berry, the one that dealt with like Dark types in case someone decided to throw Dark moves like Sucker Punch or something or Assurance. I don't know what type of Dark, uh, move, Dark moves could be that the Poison Pokemon may have. So. That's why I put it on. But then again, uh, but the only problem with that is Phantom Force. I could Phantom Force, but it would be the fastest thing. So let's say, for example, I I, I did the opening, right? With uh, the Dragapult and... And... Um, and uh, I forgot his name already. Uh, the Flygon lead, right? If I had Phantom Force, I would have been gone for one turn and the Earthquake would have been a super effective. But since I'm Choice Bandit, I'd have to force myself to get out of that churn immediately, which would have costed me so much time. And so, um, so I was thinking, what can I do? What can I do to avoid those issues? And I was like, wait, let me just slap in the air balloon. And I, since I'm the fastest thing on the field, and then Flygon should be the second fastest, I should be dealing not damage without any problems. Now, the biggest flaw with that is if I don't kill, then basically Dragon Ball is open to basically potentially gain damage, my air balloon pops, and that strategy is just gone. So I luckily that first turn that that sleep powder miss with the Venusaur missed. If not, that would have been just a completely different game. I still might have won. I don't know uh, because hey, anything in Pokemon can happen. You know, anything in Pokemon can happen. Things could go wrong and things might go right. So, I'll just leave it at that. So anyways, going back into this battle. So, um, something before the Gigantamax, Garbardor came into the field. I was, <laughs> I had, let me let you know, let, let me let you in a little secret. I completely forgot about the Gigantamax up aspect in this battle. Until I brought out Diana, I was like, wait, I gotta bring in my Gigantamax. And then I'm just like, wait, she has only two Pokemon, being the Garbodor, And I think the other one was... I want to say it was Hax, I mean Haxorus. I think the other one was Toxicroak. And I was like, what other G-Max does she have? Or, and I was just like, oh, it's the G-Max Gar Garbodor. I was like, oh, all right. And then at this point in time, throughout this battle, I knew she, since Zasa was her only last Pokemon left, I knew this was GG. Um, I knew it was. I didn't want to say it because, again, I don't want to jinx myself. Anything can happen in this in, in a Pokemon battle. Even if it's a 4v1, anything could happen, honestly. Utter destruction. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen it happen. I've seen it in multiple videos that people come back from that. And Goki Gamer was one of them, I believe. Maybe, maybe I'm just thinking about someone else. But anyways, so that concluded the W on my side. And what do you know? I got the dub. <laughs> so... Yeah, so also I just wanted to say this was one of one of the most sweeping battles I had. Actually, no, I take that back. Elf's battle definitely is the one I swept. But anyways, thank you Tai Chi Chu for that amazing battle. Hope you have a wonderful day. Um, and also for the rest of you guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. I know this was a little bit of a weird voiceover, but anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you guys made it this far. Let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite part of this episode. Now, this episode won't have like a post commentary like the rest of the other gym battles. And the reason um, that was because when I was talking to Tai Chi Chu through Discord, she said she wasn't in the right place to be having like a Discord call. So I was like, I respect you. All good. Um, I don't necessarily have to have the voiceovers, but if, if I could have them, that'd be amazing like I did for the last couple of gym battle. Um... Uh, matches but anyways this has been awesome ju 18 and i'll see you guys in the next gym battle challenge peace